All right, everybody, welcome back. It's Gregory Unruh, and this is part three in our five-part series on geomimicry. So in the last segment, segment, we talked about geomimicry as you know the human imitation of physical geological processes and the design and manufacture of products. And we said that it's both been the basis of much of our success as a species, but also has been the driver of many ongoing sustainability problems. So we're lucky we've been delivered this wonderfully prosperous material world, but of course the processes by how we achieve this world uh, is what drives many of our sustainability challenges. Geomimetic industry produces huge volumes of good and ser goods and services, um, but because they, the, the way our system is designed, they, they accumulate in this, what is known as a linear throughput economy, where products go from cradle to grave. Um, so it's been recognized from a long time as the take, make, waste economy. And we, you know, we talked about the environmental degradation that the system produces just from extracting the natural resources on the front end. Um, but then the, the, the system is very, very efficient at taking those raw materials, transforming them into, into products, and then quickly turning them into waste. Uh, it's not recognized generally, but it's estimated that over 80% of the waste is generated before the product is even finished. Okay, that's, I know that sounds crazy, but if you want to make one ton of pharmaceutical pills, you require 100 tons of raw materials. That's a 99% waste rate. And even a deposit, say like if you wanted to use copper or something, a very rich copper deposit is only a few percent copper. That means you're throwing away 98, 97% of all of the rock you're extracting. Um, so then though, when the product is made, it turns out even, even that small percentage that actually gets turned into, into a product, most of those become waste within a, a matter of weeks. Think of the, the life cycle of a, of a Bic pen or a, or a yogurt cup. And then only a small percentage, a few percent actually is turned into a durable product like a computer or a building or a washing machine or something like that. You know, we say what we're doing is mass production, but from that perspective, it's mass destruction. And the argument is we have to get away from this linear economy and we have to move to a circular economy. Well, I have a surprise for you. And that is we already have a circular economy. All of the waste generated by our geomimetic processes, by our geomimetic industry, will ultimately be recycled in a circular economy. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen on timescales that are useful for humans or even biology. Our existing circular economy operates on geologic timescales, and those geologic timescales are me measured not in years, but in millions of years. The geosphere is running a continental, continental scale recycling machine, and it's this machinery that's driven by plate tectonics, and this, it's this process of continuous crustal creation and destruction that's described by the rock cycle. And this rock cycle obviously is this basic concept in geology that describes the transformations of rock through time. So on the surface you have physical erosion and weathering, and this, this is mimetic by, uh, by us as our subtractive manufacturing processes. And that subtractive processing is, is sculpting the geomorphology of the landscape. Then in the oceans you have sedimentation and accretion, and that's this additive manufacturing process that's building up these rock layers, and we obviously do that through our own uh, additive manufacturing approaches. And then at depth, these rocks get subjected to intense heats and pressures that transform them. And we geomimetic those through processes like metallurgy or ceramics or petrochemistry. And then at the core of all this, you have this nuclear generator. The heat that's driving plate tectonics is generated by nuclear decay deep at the, uh, in the Earth's surfaces. So we're part of this. And this, this, this thing works as a planetary scale circular economy. And humans are already part of that system. And that means we are implicitly relying on this process to recycle our waste, something that we haven't recognized and has really big uh, implications. You know, every time we bury waste in a landfill or put, you know, nuclear waste down in a nuclear depository, a big hole in the ground, what we're doing in practice is turning that waste over to the geosphere for recycling. 
And you know, in, in millions of years, you know, th this is actually a landfill here on, on the coast and maybe it'll get buried and then millions of years it might find its way to a subduction zone and actually be then dragged down deep into the earth and all of that waste will be uh, melted, transformed and, and recycled. It's taken down you know, for geological recycling. Now, of course, that's not going to solve our problems. We can't sit around waiting millions of years for the geosphere to recycle our waste. But in effect, that's what we're doing. And my argument here is recognizing the futility of that implicit choice that we're counting on geologic recycling and confronting that can be a wake-up call for us to rethink what we're doing. So we're going to discuss this issue and in greater detail uh, in our next video. So I'll see you in our next video when we're going to continue our discussion of geomimicry.